Um, the next uh, presenter, I would like to invite Frank, who uh, will share with us his uh, research and assessment on, on, on the progress of how, how of gender equality, how Hyoko framework of action mainstream gender and what uh, and, uh, uh, and what's the situation so far? And also, it try to identify opportunity to in mainstream gender into the post uh, uh, post 2015 uh, disaster uh, risk reduction action plan. Thank you, Ha. Um, I've also had a dream. My dream is not quite as articulate yet as Magnus's dream, but I decided to give this presentation anyway, even though it's uh, fairly early days. Um, it's um, a little bit more than a dream and, and an idea in that we have already done um, some work on this. But the idea, or my hope at least, is that this might lead to something much larger. So at the moment, this um, I, I have to call it a concept note because that's what it says in PMAC. Um, and it hasn't really uh, it hasn't really reached the stage of a of a project yet. It's been running on the efforts of a, of an intern, uh, Diane Guria, who is a, a French lady who's been working with us in Bangkok for over the last three months, and who's now working for IIED on community-based adaptation in Ethiopia. And it's all and other than that, it's been mostly been running on, on the smell of an oily rag and a lot of um, in-kind time. So the idea here is um, to address one of the key um, issues that's um, well been left unaddressed um, to a great extent uh, in disaster risk reduction efforts, um, and that is um, gender aspects in terms of um, vulnerability to, to hazards and, and other environmental risks. And it's, um, it's a project that we're working on together with UNDP in Bangkok with the Regional, um, Regional Crisis Prevention and Recovery Program, um, which is part of the Regional Center for Asia Pacific. And what we're interested in is to try and understand how the Hyogo Framework for Action, um, which is the current global framework for disaster risk reduction, um, has addressed, has incorporated gender as, as a key element of disaster risk reduction, um, and what progress um, has been made under the HFA uh, to address uh, gender, um, and to identify opportunities for doing things better um, in the post-HFA period after 2015. So as you know, a lot of these things like the HFA as well as the Millennium De Development Goals um, are coming to an end and there's now a lot of effort and SEI is um, involved in a lot of that effort to um, decide how these, how, what should follow from these strategies. So in terms of, uh, in the context of disaster risk reduction, I, I don't think I need to say much um, about the, the role of gender. Um, it is a key determinant of social vulnerability. Um, a lot of evidence has been collected that um, both genders are vulnerable to changes and risks uh, in different ways because of their roles and responsibilities, because of cultural um, and traditional roles and norms, and that um, to up to now there's been a fairly limited uptake of um, these considerations, uh, how to uh, better consider gender in disaster risk reduction policies can be improved, um, and particularly in the post-HFA uh, environment. So how can we better design and implement policies uh, for gender equality and particularly the empowerment of women um, and how, how can we actually develop um, mechanisms for, for measuring progress. So the idea behind this project um, is to look particularly at the HFA priority one, um, which is 
to ensure that disaster risk reduction is a national and local priority with a strong institutional basis and implementation. And this really goes to the core of what uh, Charlotte, the Director General of CEDA, was talking about earlier in that, uh, I guess, rather than preaching to the choir and talking to like-minded people uh, in various organizations and, and the government, how do we really reach the people at the top that make the discussion, uh, sorry, the decisions about strategies and budgets um, and how can we get them to place more interest and, and um, investment in, um, in gender aspects in this case. And of course, priority, um, this priority is only one of five of the HFA's um, uh, objectives and um, it's fair to say that all five priority areas of the HFA have some uh, aspects of, um, of gender um, equality w within them, but we, we decided to focus on this one. And we also decided to focus on um, the three, three of the most vulnerable um, countries um, within, within Asia um, that uh, are very poor countries um, that are um, very prone to, to hazards and climate change uh, impacts. Um, and to try and to support those countries in particular. But the idea really is to engage in a regional cooperation with, um, with many countries in Southeast Asia and to develop a strategic partnership between SEI and UNDP, which um, hopefully from this year on will be funded. So um, what we're interested in is, is to try and understand the, the, the mechanisms or the steps at the various um, levels of disaster risk reduction um, decision making on how this priority uh, one can be translated into measurable actions um, through policies, investments, and activities. So the questions that are guiding us are basically how are gender aspects considered under the HFA, what progress has been made today, today to address gender dimensions, um, how can social vulnerability be addressed or to, to be reduced further by addressing these gendered aspects? Um, and how can we better monitor, evaluate, and report gender aspects? So um, what we're hoping um, uh, as, a, as an outcome of this um, will be improved recommendations, um, as I said, for the post-2015 agenda, um, as well as uh, some new and improved assessment methods um, that will look particularly at indicators um, to, to measure gender aspects, which don't really um, exist today. And we, we did a mission, um, a, a joint UNDP SEI mission to, to Myanmar, one of the case study countries where we undertook interviews with um, key stakeholders, um, as well as focus groups with the Disaster Risk Reduction Working Group, um, as well as uh, quite a large number of organizations that are working on disaster risk reduction or other community development aspects that include gender and have some bearing on disaster risk reduction. And there's a whole bunch of findings, of course, initial insights that are coming out of that, um, which I don't have the time to go through, but um, overall it's clear that um, there's very little, even though it's um, manifest in the new disaster management law, which has just um, been enacted in July of this year, um, there's, there's a lot of legal and regulatory guidance um, for disaster risk reduction um, and for the inclusion of gender and the empowerment of women in particular, um, but how that is going to be achieved through these um, particular five objectives um, is, is quite unclear at the moment, and there's a lot of scope um, for us to um, and we're in the process of doing this to support this process, to, to look at how each of these objectives can actually be translated um, into particular activities. Um, so it's one of these opportunities, I think, that we have um, in SEI and particularly with the new initiative um, for disaster resilience that um, Ha mentioned earlier. And there is a draft report available which I'm happy to share. And I'll leave it there. Thanks very much.